Okay, um, good afternoon, everybody. And California Commission on Disability Access Checklist Committee meeting is now called to order on Wednesday, June 22nd, 2022. And um, uh, Presley, please begin the housekeeping. Hello, thank you, Chair Commissioner Holloway. I will get started on housekeeping. Good afternoon. The California Commission on Disability Access Checklist Committee is now called to order on Wednesday, June 22nd, 2022. Uh, this checklist committee will be on Zoom via teleconference and held at the California Commission on Disability Access Headquarters, located at 400 R Street, Suite 312, Sacramento, California, 95811. Per Assembly Bill 361, extending the Bagley Keene flexibility through March 31st, 2022, teleconferencing restrictions were waived during the COVID-19 pandemic. Therefore, committee members were not required to list their remote locations. However, in accordance with the expiration of Assembly Bill 361's teleconferencing provisions, members of the public may participate either by Zoom or teleconference from any location. The first agenda was distributed on Friday, June 10th, 2022, and the amended and final agenda was distributed on Friday, June 17th, 2022. The most recent agenda can be found on the CCDA's website. The commissioners listed CCDA's checklist committee meeting locations are as follows. Commissioner Drake Dillard, Committee Member of California Commission of Disability Access Checklist Committee, location 4248. Don Moreno Drive, Los Angeles, California, 90008. This meeting is being captioned and recorded. To assist in this effort, please state your first and last name each time you speak and speak loud and clear. The live captioning link has been included. Uh, has been included in the chat for your use. Public participants can use the raise hand function to alert the committee of when they would like to speak. And we will also give an opportunity for public members who have called into the meeting, at which time they can unmute themselves. If you are attending this meeting via teleconference, please press star six on your keypad to unmute or mute yourself. If you would like to alert CCDA, press star nine to telephonically raise your hand and staff will call on you. Please remember to mute yourself if you are not speaking to reduce noise. If you have technical issues throughout the meeting and need assistance, please use the chat function to alert the CCDA staff or email ccda at dgs.ca.gov. I'll be passing it back to you, Commissioner Holloway. Thank you, Presley. Good job. Uh, please, we will now go to item one, which is the roll call. So if you would please do the roll call, that would be great. Yes, sounds good. Thank you, Commissioner Holloway. So Perfect. for roll call, we will start with uh, Brian Holloway. Present. Drake Dillard. Here. Uh, Mark Christian. He will not be here today. Richard Holleran. All right, he's not here. Ike Naji. Not here. Uh, Brandon Estes. Present. Mendy Shadyab. Not here. And then Bill Zel Zelmer. Here. Awesome. So we uh, have taken roll call and we do not have quorum for today's meeting. Okay. Um, uh, there are members of the public in this meeting. Uh, we would like you to identify yourselves and you may do so now. You just need to unmute yourself and give us your name, please. Gina Dickentrizi. Thank you. Anyone else? Eric Drever, Principal Architect, Division of the State Architect. Thank you. And any one last time, anyone else? Chair um, Miller on the behalf of Senator Brian Jones. Last call, anyone else? None appearing, okay, thank you. Uh, let's go on to item number two, which is our um, March 23rd, 20, 2022 minutes. Uh, however, without a quorum, we'll need to move this to the next um, checklist committee meeting. I don't think we need to do that. No. Uh, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to make sure that Presley recognized that I was present. This is Drake Dillard. 
Hi, Commissioner Drake Dillard. Yes, I did. I recognize your presence. Thank Welcome. You. Thank you. Okay, um, let's see. So we don't need a motion for that. Let's go to item number three. Uh, do we have any comments from the public on issues that are not on today, today's agenda? Anyone in the public want to comment on a non-agenda item? None appearing. Okay, thank you. And now item four is Assembly, uh, Assembly Bill 2917, uh, State Law Disability Access. And um, Teresa is going to report yeah. us. I want to, before we start though, I want to do a disclaimer. Oh, sure. Um, so uh, Teresa will be with you momentarily. I just wanted to let everyone know that the CCDA understands that the legislative bills have not been passed. So the, the, the bills we're going to discuss today have not been passed and statutory requirements have not have yet to be finalized. We would like to discuss optional measures to address these bills, these bills, potential requirements and how CCDA will optimally satisfy them. Okay, so, yeah. thank you. All right, I skipped your part. No, no. All right, uh, Teresa. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair Commissioner Holloway. Uh, as you can see, the existing law for 2917 requires an attorney who sends uh, or serves a complaint on the basis of one or more construction related accessibility claims to satisfy specified requirements, including among other things, sending a copy of the complaint and submitting information about the complaint uh, to the California Commission on uh, Disability Access. This bill would also require an attorney who sends or serves a complaint alleging that an internet website is not accessible to satisfy those requirements. Uh, this bill contains other related provisions uh, and other existing laws as well. Uh, this bill is uh, similar, has similar provisions to uh, Civil Code uh, 55.32 and that uh, the complaints, uh, the case resolution reports, which uh, represent the dismissals uh, as well as the settlements to be sent to the California Commission on Disability Access within five business days and submitting them into our internet portal. It also requires that we uh, maintain a log of these uh, submissions and report them no longer, no later, excuse me, than every six months uh, which represents the top 10 uh, alleged violations uh, as well. I have a question. Um, uh, is there any penalty for failure to comply? Um, currently, uh, we as a commission are not uh, taking an enforcer role. So we essentially just report uh, when we are able to recognize it. And uh, we are notified by the California State Bar uh, if someone has not uh, filed a claim, a case resolution report or a case file. But the California Commission on Disability Access uh, does not uh, provide a penalty, uh, the California State Bar has that authority to penalize an attorney if they are not a, adhering to the Civil Code 55.32. And if passed, um, now it'll be uh, related to Assembly Bill 2917, which involves the alleged violations of internet websites. Um, as I recall in the past, over the past few years, uh, this has been body to be delayed. Right, right. right. <laughs> and so um, I guess the question is, when we've had attorneys that have consistently failed to provide notice, have we actually sent complaints to the bar? That would be, Teresa, have we actually sent any 
complaints. Can you hear us? Yes, um, I can hear you. Uh, if it is a Public Records Act request to verify if an attorney has submitted a specific case, uh, we are able to release the information to the investigator. Uh, I have worked with uh, several representatives from the California State Bar when I have been contacted under the context of a Public Records Act to determine if an attorney is in compliance. And uh, I've been able to look in the portal and see, uh, verify if a particular case was submitted uh, and provide the information of the case was not submitted or the case is submitted and they are in compliance. H have I answered your question, uh, Chair Commissioner? Well, really, a, a, a PRA is uh, quite a pain. So it's, it's, it's almost a penalty itself. <laughs> So uh, in a way, as long as, as long as we pursue, you know, blatant violators, <clears throat> I think that's, we should continue to do that. And it hasn't really been on our part, it's just been more of the requests that we're getting in. So mm -hmm. we just are kind of, you know, performing the duties along. Once, once the request is made, we just basically have the information you're asking. So, okay, let's see um, if we've got uh, comments and thoughts from our committee members first. Uh, any, any thoughts or additions or questions on this uh, bill? Uh, Chair, Chair Commissioner Downey, I, I believe I have a C1 hand raised. Is that correct? Uh, Mr. Zomer, did you raise your hand? Yes. Uh, so I was wondering, the last sentence of that summary says this bill contains other related provisions and other existing laws. Uh, I, I don't have a copy of that. Can you summarize or characterize what that refers to? Uh, yes, actually that uh, I'm glad that you, nice segue. Uh, I was actually getting ready to turn this over to operations manager Phil McFall, who will be talking about uh, the uh, other provisions in the form of the accessibility standards for the website checklist. Uh, I will mention that uh, we also are currently in discussions for a potential partnership with the California Department of Rehabilitation uh, in order to address Assembly Bill 2917. Uh, I will uh, transition this over to Phil McFall. Thank you, Teresa. Good job. All right, <clears throat> Teresa. And thank you, Mr. Zelma, for segueing into the next portion of the uh, presentation. <laughs> Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the 2917 and the, 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 uh, the sentence that you in, uh, referred to, and that it states that the commission shall develop and make available on its internet site or work with another agency to develop other toolkits or educational modules to educate businesses on accessibility requirements, including accessibility standards for internet and website and to facilitate compliance with those requirements. The Department of Rehabilitation, as Teresa alluded to, has developed a website accessibility toolkit, and we do plan that. So a potential partnership on using Department of Rehabilitation standards, and we're gonna you know, partner with them to use their, uh, their standards for the website accessibility. CCDA would create educational modules or a toolkit focused on facilitating compliance for a website from a business, from, and this is gonna be done from a business perspective. And, um, that's really the, the, the crux of it. Um, I'd like to pose the question, what ideas or perspectives can the commission share about the potential to development of a toolkit uh, of this type of educational uh, module toolkit? So what, I guess it's a question I'm, I'm, I'm posing to everyone and I can just put that out there. Um, any ideas or perspectives on um, what, the, what the commission can share? Um, and I don't know if that's where you were uh, going Mr. Zellmer, or if you just want to know that bit of material. Um, I just wanted a background and, and what that what what that meant. Okay. Thank you. So uh, any additional suggestions or questions uh, as posed by Phil? Yeah, sorry. Anything, any other ideas? Uh, just a quick question. I'm assuming that on such a, a checklist Kind of group that, from a research point of view, we would want some, some website designers to tell us 
you know, the technical complications or non complications of compliance would be good. Um, we're hoping, you know, once we start working with the Department of Rehabilitation, that we can, you know, iron out how that's actually going to work. Uh, they have a lot of this already developed they, and they ready do. to go. So it's not that we're re, we're not recreating the wheel here. We just really want to partner with them in order to fulfill this this, this obligation. Okay. All right. Anyone? So, yes, on, you're, you're, thank you. Yeah. Anyone on the, in the public that would like to comment or ask a question uh, on this particular item before us? Chair Commissioner, we have Regina Dick uh, Indrizi that has her hand raised. Perfect. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you, and um, good afternoon. Um, so Regina Dick Indrizi, I work with the Office of Small Business in San Francisco. Couple things. Um, one is if there is the ability for the commission to, um, act, you know, with, if this law passes. Um, and uh, lawyers are to report is to ask them to define whether it is the website or the e-commerce site. Uh, and the reason for that suggestion is that many small businesses purchase third-party platforms. And so therefore the third-party platform may not be compliant. Um, and uh, so this is, can help identify if there are, you know, mm -hmm. large third-party platforms out there that are not compliant, that are marketing themselves to small businesses. And the reason this came up is that um, approximately a year ago, there were many bicycle shops that were sued because they worked with one third-party platform for their e-commerce site, and that platform was not um, compliant. Um, so, and then the other thing that might be a suggestion for a toolkit is perhaps to provide um, in the toolkit a recommendation on when businesses are purchasing a third party platform, questions to ask the third party vendor about their level of compliance and, and what the recommendation is to look for. So those are my two things. Thank, thank you. Good suggestions. Thank you. Perfect. All right. Uh, any other comments and suggestions and or questions on this site from the public? Chair Commissioner, I do not see any hands raised or any mention in the chat. Okay. All right. All right. We have our orders. All right. <laughs> Okay, uh, thank you very much. And let's move on to item number five, which is the accessible parking campaign update and discussion. And Abby, I think you're going to take this one. Oh, um, I think item number five is. Or did I skip it? No, you're good. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, first, we have disability access and involving funds for us all. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. No, you're fine. That's me. Okay. <laughs> Go back a page. All right, let's go back to the revolving plan. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Holloway. Um, yes, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about the uh, Disability Access and Education Revolving Fund. I have mentioned this in the past couple of meetings, and we are continuing to make progress on this. So I wanted to give an update today. Um, we did do some outreach to some of the cities in California, and um, we've been doing that over the past uh, maybe year or so. Um, it's been a lot of the public works and accounting departments. One of the common themes that we've noticed is that cities are not aware of the vital functions of the fund. Um, and um, we um, were the, the miss, there's a big miss on the highest priorities of the fund. Um, we want to increase cast services, establish and maintain cast oversight, increase outreach efforts. And these are the things that we should be focusing on and the city should be focusing on with this fund, but we're finding that that's not the case. Um, <clears throat> And so when we have started and we are developing a, a solution to that, one of the first things we're doing right now is creating a quick reference guide. The quick reference guide isn't meant to be an uh, end all be all to um, the understanding this, this, this fund, but what it is is really getting cities to understand the ins and outs of the, I mean, to really understand the, on a high level what the fund is. We wanna distribute this, this quick reference guide to all the cities in California 
And once we do that, we also want to start working on our next step, which is going to be an outreach um, um, training. And um, and um, sorry, I skipped a sec uh, section. Um, I skipped the whole section. I skipped the whole section. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess that's, that's the common thing today. <laughs> uh, like I said, we want to, the purpose of this quick reference guide is to educate cities on the allocation of the fund and uh, what it should be used for. Uh, and we want to really emphasize the highest priority. Our highest priority, um, our state architect has basically you know, told us we want to make sure we focus on the highest priority and we are absolutely intending to do that with our quick reference guide. In addition to that, we want to do some uh, um, training We've thought about some additional, like a brown bag type of training where we have people log into a uh, webinar type of situation. They can ask questions. And we also plan to go out into the communities and do additional training as well. That's a really high level. Um, and um, what we are, um, you know, I want to pose this again to the commission today. If you have any other suggestions or anything else you think would be helpful for us to be focusing on over the next, um, few months as we really start to develop this this and move forward with this action plan. We would love any feedback from, from okay. the public board. All right, let's do uh, both the committee members and the public. Please raise your hand if you have ideas and suggestions or any questions. Committee members or public. Chair Commissioner De uh, Holloway, I do not see any hands raised in the chat or uh, any mention in the chat. Report, no? <laughs> okay, now, let's go to agenda item six, accessible parking campaign update and discussion. Abby. Awesome, well, hello everyone. I'll, I'll get a hold of this. <laughs> I'm Abigail Ridge and I am the legislative and administrative analyst over here with the CCDA. And this is more or less going to be an update to the committee on how the accessible parking campaign is doing on their progression of their toolkits. So right now the accessible parking campaign work groups are working on paragraphs, which are ultimately going to be the content that will make up these toolkits. So when I say toolkits, there's going to be two different toolkits. There'll be one for ADA coordinators and business owners and operators. And then we also have a toolkit that will be geared towards the construction industry. So right now, the two work groups are working on writing the paragraphs, editing, and commenting on them in a large group setting. Ultimately, as I said, these paragraphs will make up the content to go into the toolkits. And we are on track to have drafts of these toolkits by the end of September, as it's outlined on our little timeline on the screen. So we should have drafts by the end of September and there will be two different toolkits, one for our business owners and operators and one for our construction industry. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Um, no, Kevin, That's it. I know right. you uh, Committee members, questions, thoughts, questions, and uh, suggestions, any other ideas? How about from the public? Any questions? This is Commissioner Dillard. I have a question. Yes, please. Um, understanding that there's kind of two paths here, and I, I know we were all working on dra a draft. Would there be the opportunity at some point uh, to actually for each of the separate committees to uh, review the other committees' draft to see what the to see how they are, I guess, addressing the issue. Because one is one is toward business, which it has its own direction, I understand. But I think it would also be interesting to see how the other committee is addressing the construction uh, industry as well. Because we're, we're kind of working independently in a way. Who's going to bring us up to date on that? Yeah, no, I, I just, that's a great idea, actually. And I, I, we're going to take that. We are absolutely going to do that. So um, thank you for that, that that suggestion. And we will absolutely work on, on making that happen. And I, I agree that would be good to have a different set of eyes on it, you know, from a different industry to see how they how they break it down and how they feel about what the other, you know. And we can, yes, answer your question, yes. <laughs> <laughs> OK, any other uh comments and uh, also from the public, suggestions, questions. 
Uh, Chair Commissioner Holloway, I do not see any hands raised or any mention in our chat. Okay, all right. All right, um, if the last page is, am I on, still on schedule here? You're on schedule. Okay. Okay, so um, item seven is future agenda items, and this is for the committee members and also the general. Any other suggested items to include on our next agenda uh, packet or agenda items? Any other things you think we ought to be adding or not doing yet? Chair Commissioner. Holloway, I do not see any hands raised. Uh, there isn't any indication in the chat as well. Oh, okay. uh, <clears throat> All right, um, as a reminder, the next checklist committee meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, September 28th, 2022 at 1.30 p.m. And the next uh, committee meeting is designated for executive committee, which will be held on October 12th, uh, 2022 from 1.30. And at the CCDA offices on our street. Yes. Our next executive, sorry, that's a typo. Uh, our next executive will be on July 13th. Ah, okay. Next executive committee is July 13th, 1.30. Correct. 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 Time. Correct. And channel. Right. All right. <laughs> um, okay. Any other uh, comments or suggestions before we close out from the public and or from the committee members? Chair, Commissioner Holloway, I do not see any indications, any hands raised or any uh, indication in the chat. Okay, uh, we don't have a quorum, so we can't take a motion a second to adjourn. So I will just adjourn the meeting. Thank you everybody. And thank you to staff, great job. Really appreciate it. Take care everybody, stay well. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you.